I'm Brian Carden. I'm CMO of Lattice. I'm here with Shashi Upadier, who's CEO of Lattice. How are you, Shashi? Very well, thank you. So let's talk about technology and the salesperson mm -hmm. and uh, what's been changing and what hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. So CRM has been around for about 20 years, and I think when CRM was launched, uh, a lot of people thought this is the beginning and this is the future of information for salespeople. Mm -hmm. So why is CRM not addressing a lot of salespersons' most important needs right now? All right. So if you um, look at the history of CRM, it uh, you know the first company out that created a viable CRM system was Siebel, mm -hmm. and that was in 1995, right? Or a little bit before that, but in the early 90s. And if you and the technology behind CRM has largely not changed. So as a, while they've made a transition from what used to be client server yeah. to a cloud-based solution, the basic idea behind CRM, which is a way for sales managers to keep track of what their salespeople do by having them fill in information every week, hasn't changed. Um, and that was great for a world in which there wasn't a lot of data to go around. Right. right? When we lived in a data-scarce world it made sense that sales reps would have to go in and enter the data so that their managers could you know, look at it. Um, what's happened really in the last 15 years is we have gone from a data scarce world to a data abundant world, which is what big data is all about. So now you are in a world where the sales rep actually has to go outside of CRM to all kinds of different places to prepare for a conversation. So they see CRM really more as a burden that they have to invest time in in order to provide you know, good reports to their managers and everyone above that. But CRM is not helping them do their job better. So that was the promise of CRM, though. So I remember reading Gartner and Forrest reports, mm -hmm. and the future CRM was not just about the burden of helping management, right. but it was going to help the salesperson. And it did have good contact information, and there would be there's some valid information in there, mm -hmm. but you're suggesting that CRM has not kept pace with the needs of the salesperson. Yeah, I'm suggesting it's not kept pace with the needs of the salesperson, given the new world that we live in. And I kind of want to bring it back to it's not just about data. So in principle, you can go and put a lot of data into CRM, right? You can go put in the contact information, you can go put information about companies, you can buy third-party data, you can do all of that stuff, put it, in, put it in CRM. But the rep still has to navigate through all that information. Yeah. What's missing in CRM today is anything that allows it to draw inferences about what that data actually means. The inside generation is what's missing. And what reps are asking for is, hey, I want to spend more of my time selling. I want to spend more of my time in front of the customer. I don't want to spend more of my time preparing and looking through this data field or that data field. Well, let's talk about another technology that's adjacent to CRM. So if CRM didn't answer everything, mm -hmm. how about marketing automation, mm -hmm. an area that I worked in for many years, right. and I would tell a lot of prospects, this is all the inference. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have a lead score, well, that's who you call first, second, or third. Right. So isn't uh, marketing automation the answer to prioritizing contextual conversations? So does that work well with CRM to provide the sales rep with what they need? So I'm going to ask that question back to you uh. in a few minutes. Um, but let me give you my answer, and then you can, you can tell me what you think. Um, uh, marketing automation is very, is very focused on a particular problem, which is how to generate leads through marketing activity. Uh, for most sales organizations, you know, leads need to come in from both from the activity of salespeople and marketing people. And the typical mix that's floated around there is about 30% comes from marketing, another 70% yeah. comes from sales. So the question is who's helping the sales team generate those leads, right? Because right? they're largely doing it by spending time looking up this list or that list, call calling people, and uh, you know, reading up business journal and seeing you know, who's opened an office recently. And uh, our, our place in, in that ecosystem is to help automate that. Uh, the second, uh, Part of marketing automation is, is that while it does a pretty good job of tracking contacts and what individuals do in response to your marketing campaigns, it doesn't really have a good sense for what's happening at the company that the contact works for, oh, yes. right? And when you think about what leads to a real purchase, it's kind of a combination of uh, what's happening at the company level. Is the company doing well as a business? Is it growing? Is it shrinking? Is it doing all the right things? Uh, as well as the individual role that you want to target at. So we believe these solutions are complementary. You know, my belief is that ultimately, uh, marketing automation serves a very important need, which is to put some measurement into what was previously unmeasured marketing. Yeah. Uh, but it's a part of the puzzle. It's not the complete solution. Yeah, I'm actually more in agreement than you would think. 
So um, I think it is uh, one piece, and it's one very important piece of data uh, that goes into it. But sometimes you can have some very conflicting piece of data on what marketing automation says do this, and I think there's some external and some other internal data that may say go the other way. Mm -hmm. So an example is, um, you know, let's say different people are all over the website, they're watching videos, they're downloading things, it looks like they're very exciting. Well, lo and behold, there's external data that says the company uh, just went into bankruptcy. Or they used to have 100 jobs posted on the website, now mm -hmm. it's down to two. Mm -hmm. So a lot of counter indicators. Right. So I think you can have some false positives mm -hmm. uh, with lead scoring. And of course, lead scoring assumes that you have those contact names to score. Mm -hmm. So there could be a terrific company that you have no contacts for, right. and so suddenly they open up an office in Beijing, they're hiring hundreds of people, they're growing like crazy, but none of that will register in a marketing automation system because you have no contacts to that company. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, what Lattice can do is actually indicate which companies uh, are of high value and likely to buy, and then say, go out and get contacts. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so I think it can work both ways. You have false positives, and you can just completely miss uh, a company that is a good prospect if you don't have individual contacts. So that's where market automation, I think, falls flat. I think one thing that is great about Lattice is, of course, you can integrate uh, marketing automation data. And so with other forms of internal, external, social data, and so on. Is that something that you guys do ab now? With some absolutely. We, we, uh, we have a way of working uh, two ways. So we work with marketing automation in a, uh, in a bi-directional way. And that means uh, we use their data to figure out who are good targets and, and how to go after them uh, in the context of everything that's happening with the companies that uh, the customer cares about. Uh, we can also provide uh, the, the data corpus that we basically create to, to generate much better marketing campaigns. Because a lot of times marketing campaigns are really created you know, based on, as you know, lists and a few attributes that they were able to put together. Right. But by having this massive data set behind it, they can get much more targeted in terms of how they're running the campaigns. And it ultimately leads to much better integration between sales and marketing. And have the two teams working together, which ultimately leads to better results for the combined organization. So when you're selling uh, Lattice into a company, uh, when I was at Eloqua, we sold into the marketing side, mm -hmm. and uh, that was sort of the beginning and the end of the story. The mm -hmm. marketing team got all excited about it, and we sold them. It seems to me that Lattice uh, really touches salespeople, marketing, uh, perhaps there's a, an analytics team mm -hmm. at some of your prospects. Mm -hmm. So who are the different people at your clients that you touch and you work with? Yeah, so uh, you know, ultimately, the, uh, the, two, the two parts, right? There's a, producer of insights and consumer of insights. Mm. And the consumer of insights in our case can be either a, a, a marketing professional or a sales pro salesperson, right? And we've provided interfaces for them to do that. Um, as far as the production of insight goes, that has sort of uh, you know, a human part to it and then a machine part to it. The machine part obviously we provide, but the human part sometimes resides in marketing, sometimes resides in analytics team, and very rarely we see them reside in the sales operations function. And frankly, it just depends on where that where that group of people reside. We're, we're agnostic to uh, where it is. The main thing we care about is what we call revenue productivity or sales productivity, which is for every dollar that you're spending on sales and marketing, how many revenue dollars are you getting? How many gross profit dollars are you getting? And part of what we end up providing, and this is one common data set that all these teams, marketing, analytics, sales ops, sales, are working off of so that they can do combined campaigns they can focus on the right set of customers. If there's a particular set of customers that need more coverage, for example, sales ops can make a decision using that. Uh, if there are uh, specific customers that are risk, for example, risk of churning away, marketing can help do that, right? And by having that one place, one single place where all of this resides, uh, you know, it makes the entire organization more effective. That's great. I, uh, as, as I think about sales, I think about the last bastion of art. Mm -hmm. And so salespeople take great pride in developing relationships, uh, in saying just the right thing. So um, with big data for sales and Lattice, do you still have to have salespeople that develop relationships mm -hmm. and are quick on the phone, mm -hmm. or does this totally automate uh, you know, a salesperson's job? Uh, I completely agree with you that relationships are actually a, a very great part of sales and will always be, right? We should think of us uh, as freeing up the reps to focus their time on building their relationships. Oh, do more of that. To do more of that. Yeah rather than spending their time doing other things that kind of get in the way of doing that. Because ultimately, you know, most purchases, especially complex products, are purchased based on trust. And that can't happen if there isn't a relationship between two individuals and often multiple individuals, right, for that, to enable that to happen. So uh, while 
the art science distinction is useful, I think a, 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 a better distinction is one where we take care of all of the non-relationship part and the rep focuses on developing a relationship. That's great. Thank you very much, Shashi. That was terrific. Well, thank you. Great talking to you. Great talking to you.